Life by Divine with Sue DeMay fosters deep healing and profound awakenings as she guides you to hear, answer, and trust the highest calling of your heart. Your host and sacred guide is Global Impact Visionary Leader Sue DeMay, a best-selling author, international speaker, and gifted intuitive healer who challenges all of us to shift from life by default or even life by design to truly living life by divine. And now, here is Sue DeMay. Welcome to the show. It is an honor to be here once again with you, sharing messages that I'm inspired to bring into your life and into your heart, into your minds, in an attempt to open your minds, change your minds, unwind your mind, and shift consciousness from head to heart. The more of us that shift from head to heart, the more we will be able to operate from a place of love. And the more we are equipped to meet the fear in the world with love. Today's topic is about inner peace in a noisy world. And I believe it's possible to discover and sustain inner peace, that place of inner peace within us, a sense of calm in the mind, even when there's noise in the world, a sense of calm even in the chaos. And it helps when we are able to try in a perspective that allows us to see what's going on in the world through a different lens so that we don't get caught up in our our thoughts and our beliefs, all the programming we have in our heads, the fear-based programming. And we don't get caught up in the perspective or the meaning or the stories we tell about what's happening in the world. The story we tell will influence our perspective, the meaning we place on what's going on, and it will actually feed our fear or feed our sense of purpose. The beautiful thing is in each moment you get to choose. You get to choose who you're listening to, who's guiding you, who's teaching you, who's your sacred guide in that moment. Are you listening to ego? And the ego mind loves to keep us in fear. It's the teacher of fear. It only knows fear. And it evolves as we have become aware, the more conscious we've become, the more evolved the ego becomes because the survival of the ego depends on us believing and buying into fear. The sole purpose of our ego is to keep us safe and protected, keep us from taking risks. And our spirit, inner spirit, our soul, our heart, is a bridge to the divine. It's a bridge to the truth of who we are. It's a bridge to our essence. And it's in that bridge where we can turn to spirit who can meet us in our humanness, remind us of our divinity, and guide us in this human experience. When we are guided from that divine place, we are operating from a perspective that supports all of humanity. We are fulfilling our roles and playing the parts that we're meant to play from a place of divine guidance. It's when we get caught up in our humanness, when we get caught up in what's happening on a human level that we filter everything through the limited perspective of our minds, which is mostly programmed based in fear. As we go through today's episode, I wanna invite you to try on a new perspective. And in order to do that, you need to be in a place of curiosity and even wonderment. If you can invite in curiosity and wonderment, it creates an opening in the mind. 
the other piece I'm gonna invite you to do is offer over everything you think you know and everything you think you don't know about what's happening in your life, what's happening in other people's lives, what's happening in your country or other countries, what's happening in your own backyard and what's happening all around the globe. When you offer over everything you think you know and everything you think you don't know, we create an opening in the mind for another perspective. We create an opening in the mind for another idea. We create an opening in the mind to be guided, to be directed. Because as long as you believe you already know, your mind is closed. And it may be open to some degree, but in some, in some way it's closed. A made up mind is a closed mind. So it's important for us to offer over all our thoughts, all our beliefs, all our stories, all our preferences, especially our personal preferences. And I use that word personal preferences on purpose because the ego makes everything personal. That's what feeds our feeling of separation, separation from ourselves, our true self, and separation from each other. When we offer over our thoughts, our beliefs, our preferences, our opinions, our advice, everything we think we know, everything we think we don't know, and we shift into this mindset of, I, I know nothing about anything. Let's say just for this time together that you know nothing about anything. It creates an opening, a deep opening, a profound opening at the level of the mind that allows you to let spirit guide you, to let the divine come into your heart and direct you. Moment by moment, step by step, one breath at a time. The directions come in like breadcrumbs, like a recipe, and everything's given. And when we allow that divinity to guide us and lead us, our divinity to guide us and lead us, it's natural to be in a state of inner peace. And when we're in that state of inner peace, we can hold steady there. We can hold our light. We can trust. We can walk with deep trust and blind faith. We can find meaning in the mess. We can find purpose especially in times of challenge or, or turbulence or noise. There's a lot of noise in the world right now. But it's your thoughts and your beliefs and your story about what's happening that influences how you feel on the inside. So it's more about your internal environment. You can witness and observe the external environment and it's going to have impact to some degree if you're in your humanness and having a human experience as we all are to some degree it's going to impact you and in those times where you feel triggered or reactive or emotional just know that all that's happening is the life outside of you the world outside of you your external world external environment is bumping up against something inside of you, your internal environment. And if you feel triggered, if you feel reactive or emotional, it's hitting a chord because there's a leftover, there's something for you to look at, there's something for you to heal. So the words of Gandhi are so powerful and beautiful. It's like, be the change you wish to see in the world. That's an internal environment focus. That's more about focusing less on the doing and more on the being. How are you being in the world? So then it becomes more about being in the doing. 
when we take inspired action, we're being in the doing. What is your state of being? So inner peace is the state of being. Calm is a state of being. Abundance is a state of being. Love is a state of being. When we talk about it in our humanness and on our human experience, on that level, it's a state of being. When we're in alignment with our divinity, it's natural to be in that state of peace and calm, love, abundance, joy, even bliss. Gratitude. Those are natural side effects of being in alignment with the divine. Those are natural side effects of life by divine. So the world on the outside may look chaotic. It may look turbulent. But you can be at peace on the inside. That's the heart work. That's, that's the work that you're meant to do. And sometimes that work is about teaching how to, how other, others how to do that so that you learn and you integrate it. Because in teaching, we actually allow that teaching and that understanding to get deeper into the mind. So then we're less likely to get pulled off track or derailed by the ego or hijacked by the ego mind. By fear. So the question is, people are always like, how do I find peace? How do I find peace? Instead of asking, how do I find peace? Ask, what in my life feels like a block to my peace? What in my life is pulling me out of alignment from peace? And then the question becomes to the divine, to spirit, not your head. Because if you're asking yourself in your own head, in your own mind, it will be limited by the perspective and the teachings and the understandings and the beliefs and the programming that you have in your mind. And it's very limited, extremely limited. So the question is, offered over to the divine, the divine, God, spirit, source, universe. I always see spirit as a bridge to the divine. So I use spirit as my teacher a lot because spirit can meet us in our humanness. So I have a connection to my divinity. I'm, I can sink into my divinity, I can channel, I can be the clear channel without my humanness getting in the way, without any filters, without my own mind stopping the flow. So I can be a bridge to that divine within each of us for my clients, for you. So in my eyes, it's like spirit is that for me. When I need a reminder, spirit is that for me. Spirit is the bridge. Because in truth, the divine is nothing and everything at the same time. It's timeless, changeless, limitless. There's no duality. There's no human comprehension when you're living and experiencing oneness. In those moments where I was like completely immersed in the experience of oneness, there were no thoughts, there were no beliefs, there was no mind. There was this spaciousness even hard to capture in words. And the level of love wasn't the level of love we can even articulate in the world. It's beyond that. 
So every time we go in and have an experience of that, we, we bring a part of that back with us. And each time I move into that state of oneness, because I, I practice that regularly now, I bring a part of that with me back into my human experience so that I can then share and teach and create understanding for other people. In other words, I come and I meet everyone in their humanness and remind them of their divinity because I've been there, I experienced that. And at the same time, I'm still in my human experience myself. So there's still times where I get caught up, not as often as I used to, and not as long as I used to. So sometimes I get caught up and I catch myself right away. And sometimes I get caught up and it's a couple hours maybe a day or two, but it's too uncomfortable for me now to be out of alignment. So I catch myself pretty quick and I return to alignment pretty quick because it's really painful. I get beat up if I don't. That's the good news. Our sensitivity heightens and our tolerance decreases. So our tolerance for being out of alignment is very low and our sensitivity becomes very high the more and more you raise your vibration, the more and more you align with the divine, the more and more you live life by divine, the more and more non-negotiable it comes. It becomes because the moment you're out of alignment, it becomes really painful. Because the contrast you experience is heightened and intense. That's the good news because it forces us on a human level, it forces us to get back into alignment. So the outer world, our outer environment shifts and change. It'll shift and change every day. It'll shift and change moment to moment. And it's a question of how do you hold steady on your inner environment? How do you tap into that place of inner peace and hold steady there and witness the turbulence or witness the chaos, but remain calm? And when we have these clusters of challenges that come on our path, because if we're still in our human experience, we'll still, we'll still have these clusters, whether you're awake or asleep, whether you're in alignment or out of alignment, whether you're living life by default, life by design or life by divine, you're still going to have these challenges that come on your path. But when you can hold steady and be in alignment and your, your nature, your true nature, your internal environment is inner peace, then we can meet the chaos. We can meet the challenges with a deep trust, knowing that if it's on our path, it's purposeful and that there's something still there's a meaning or there's a purpose or there is a lesson of some degree in our human experience otherwise it wouldn't be on our path so the lessons i've learned recently i've had several clusters of challenges come in i shared a little bit here and there about it in the last couple months on the episodes so it's, it's really, what it's really taught me is to deepen and strengthen my connection to source and deepen and strengthen my trust in the divine and recognize that at this point, any challenges that are on our path are simply designed to actually allow us to come full circle with any of our leftovers. So another layer, another piece another aspect to heal and these clusters of challenges, times where we have these clusters, and so that's really what it's felt like in the last two or three months. It's like I've had all these little clusters coming in. 
and my plate got suddenly really full, not just with my work, but with other stuff personally as well coming in. And what it did was shift me even more into alignment because it shifted me even more to leaning on my faith. And the beautiful thing is, in those moments where I really leaned, leaned in to my faith, some extraordinary miracles happened. And those extraordinary miracles, some of them were small and some of them were big, but I celebrate each one. And there were times where I could feel my inner peace shifting and I was coming out of alignment with it. And I could feel my adrenals kicking in and I can feel the stress hormones moving through my body. And I haven't felt those in a long time. I used to live with them. I, I was addicted to them for a long time. They were what was familiar. It's all I knew. And I could feel myself shifting back into being invested in my human thoughts, my beliefs, my thoughts, my opinions, my preferences, taking things personally. And it was a dance between getting invested in all of that, fear-based stuff, stress, anxiety, and shifting back into deep trust. It was quite the dance because there was a lot. It was a big ask. It was a big ask by the universe. It was a big challenge placed on my path by spirit. And I've found a way to navigate it. I found a way to hold that sense of peace within myself. So it was a big, powerful lesson. It continues to be a good lesson because it's not, Quite, quite clear yet, still working on it. So when we have these moments of chaos or challenge or turbulence, or when we're witnessing it in someone else's life, the first place to look, if you're triggered, is what story are you telling? What story do you have running in your mind around what you're witnessing? Because there's what's happening and then the story you're telling about what's happening and the meaning you place on what's happening and your beliefs and thoughts about what's happening. That's where you need to begin. So being aware of your own mind and what thoughts are coming up. Because remember, only 5 to 10% of the thoughts are what we're hearing. There's a lot playing in the background in your mind. So the first step is, what story are you telling? What thoughts and beliefs do you have about what you're witnessing? What your external environment, what's going on in your external environment? What is going on in your mind? What's, what's the internal environment of your mind with your thoughts and beliefs? The stories that are going on right now. Start there. So that'll capture the five to 10% of what's going on in your head that you hear, your conscious thoughts, the self-talk. And then you shift to your emotions. How do I feel? And a lot of people do this. They, they say, I feel like, Mike, you can't feel like. I feel whatever it is. It has to be an emotion. I feel that you're not helping me. That's, that's not a feeling. That's a belief. The feeling would be, I feel unsupported. I feel left out. I feel neglected. I feel whatever it is. So when I feel neglected, I feel unheard. I feel unloved. So start to get in underneath to the feeling. Because the feeling is going to point to what else is going on in the mind. So 
So start with the thoughts, thoughts and beliefs. What do you hear in your head? What are the stories you're telling? What is the story that's running in your head right now? As you're witnessing something else going on with somebody else, what's the story you're telling about their life, about what's happening, about your life, whatever it is. Then shift to the feeling. What am I feeling? And if you can't find a thought, you can't find a belief, you can't find a story, then go right to the feeling. It doesn't have to be this, this order. I'm just giving it to you in this order because that's how it's coming in right now. But don't get stuck on or attached to the order. The other path to get into your internal environment and see what's left over is to ask, where do I feel this physical experience in my body? So when you witness something, so for example, I went to the grocery store just this morning. I had to get some bananas for my smoothie. And as I was driving back, there was a dog on the other side of the highway. So in Turks and Caicos, there's a main highway. There's no traffic lights anywhere on the island. There's a main highway and it's separated by a causeway. So the traffic is going two lanes in one direction and two lanes in the other direction and a causeway in the middle. And the traffic goes pretty fast on that highway, usually 70 to 80 kilometers an hour. And I, on the opposite side of where I was driving, I saw a dog at the side of the road. And I'm talking to the dog, I'm like, okay, you stay over there, because there was a lot of traffic coming toward him on the other, in the opposite direction from me. And he did a whole like jump and skip, like he was gonna run out, and then he jumped back, and I could feel my body tightening, and I'm like, stay there, stay there. And he did it again just before this truck was coming. It's like a big truck. And I could feel this energy rise up in me and this contraction in my heart and this little panic. It wasn't as big as it would have been at one point, but I felt the panic. And I took a deep breath and he ended up going back to the side of the road. So I took a deep breath and I kept driving and, and off I went. I have no idea if he crossed the road or if he gave up. I'm not sure. And what it reminded me of was a past experience so i could feel the energy in my chest i could feel a tightening i could feel the panic and i could feel like a layer of sadness or grief for the loss of his life if he would have stepped out into the road and now as I'm talking about it and I'm sharing it with you, I can still feel there's a little bit left over and the memory that's actually coming into my awareness. So I'm, I went into the body. I started talking about the feeling, the physical feeling. Then I got to the emotions and now I'm actually getting back to the memory. So sometimes we can go in through the body, feel the feeling and trace it back to the thought, the belief, memory or story. So the memory I have is when we were, we, we would go to my grandparents cottage every summer and they had a house in town and then we had the cottage on the lake and we'd go visit them for the whole summer and most of the time we were at the cottage at the lake so gravel road really quiet all my cousins around our cousins had cottages all around us so it was actually quite quite a fun time for for my brother and sister and I and every once in a while we'd go into town to do like a big grocery shopping or laundry or different things so that we'd go back to the house the main house and that was actually on a big highway and this is northern ontario so it was a big highway where big transport trucks go and and it was like the 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 highway that pretty much drove right through the town it was a small town but it was the main highway and it was a highway that actually links all of ontario you basically take this highway to go all the way out of ontario from southern ontario to to northern ontario and out to the next province so we were on the front porch, my brother and I, we were playing, and this big dog came. And at the time when I was younger, I was actually really afraid of dogs, and especially big dogs that I didn't know. So this big dog came running up, and I started screaming. And my grandma came running because she heard me screaming, and she kind of yelled at the dog to, to go away, and he ran. Unfortunately, he ran toward the road and ran straight out onto the highway and got hit by a truck. And I watched it and I felt so 
bad. I cried for days. I felt guilty because if I didn't scream, my grandma wouldn't have yelled at him. He wouldn't have run into the traffic. I felt so bad and it was devastating. And I am like, as a child, and I still am an animal lover, I, I like, I would take little bugs and find them in the house and release them. Like that's the kind of thing I would do. So to have an animal die because the, the dog didn't make it in front of me and it was my fault was devastating devastating and so as I'm telling that story I can feel that little girl in me still feeling I'm still harboring some of that guilt so I'm just kind of softening and allowing it to clear as I'm talking to you and sharing the story with you so that I can allow this my body my physical body and my emotional body to process it because as a child, I didn't know how to process it. If I felt guilty, I would actually contract and hold on. And my tendency as a child was to actually punish myself. So if I felt guilty or I felt bad about something, I would hang on to it and create more suffering and pain for myself because I felt like I should be punished. I felt like I didn't deserve love. There was, there was a lot. There was a lot in that. So I tended to hold on to things. So as I'm sharing that story with you, I'm actually processing and allowing some of that energy to move and clear. So that's an example of how we can use our life classroom, the experiences we're having in this moment, to process any leftovers from our past. If something happens and it impacts you, you feel an irk, a hit, a bump, a shift, a contraction, a trigger, emotionally charged around something, frustrated suddenly, judgy, critical, all those kinds of things are actually indication that there's something left over within you that you need to heal. There's something in your internal environment that's interfering with your ability to be at peace. So. I'm gonna share a little bit more after the break, how we can maintain and sustain inner peace in a noisy world. But for now, I just want you to, as you're listening to the, the break, as we go through the break, I just want you to pause, and kind of feel into anything that you feel physically or emotionally. Let's go there, physically and emotionally. So tune into your physical body and your emotional body. and see if you can tap into any anything that's present right here and right now. We'll take a short break and then I'll tell you what to do with it when we come back. The Heart Led Living Intuition Academy with Sue DeMay is a unique unschooling experience designed to unwind, clear, and align your intuitive channel. And the doors are open for you now. Experience unwavering faith and deep trust in your intuition as you strengthen your connection to source, allowing you to walk through every moment with more peace, confidence, clarity, and certainty. Experience this deep personal transformation with Sue's guidance including the option to share what you learn as a certified intuitive coach. This is your time to unwind and reprogram your mind, to rebuild your foundation and realign with your intuitive heart. Enrollment is now open. Apply today at heartledliving.com forward slash intuition academy. Again, that's heartledliving.com forward slash intuition academy. Welcome back. You're listening to Life by Divine and I'm your host, Sue Dumay. Today, I've been talking about inner peace in a noisy world and how do we hold that place of peace and calm in amongst the chaos and amongst the challenges? How do we find meaning and purpose in those moments where things look messy and turbulent? And I was talking about our internal versus our external environment. 
So we don't really have control over changing our external environment, although our internal environment influences our external environment. There's things that are happening in the world that we don't have control over. And the one thing that we can do is actually turn and focus inward and check out our internal environment and see where are we not in alignment or where is the discord within us or where are the leftovers getting triggered and impacted by what's happening around us. So when we can look within, whether we're looking at our thoughts or beliefs, the stories we're telling, we're actually looking at the level of the mind or we're looking at the emotional body, how are we feeling, what emotions are present, are we emotionally triggered or emotionally charged around something, are there negative emotions coming up around certain circumstances and, and neutral about others, it's those negative ones that tend to be where we need to look. And, and then we can look at our physical body as well. We can actually go into the physical body and trace it back to the mind. So I often say, I go through the body to heal the mind because as an empath, as an intuitive healer and someone who's highly sensitive and I can pick up on other people's physical and emotional states of being within my own physical body and my own physical experience. I can tap into and shine light on it for them. As we bring awareness to that, then we can trace it back to where it is in the mind. And often it, it's traced back to a memory or a thought or a belief. And sometimes it's just energy, like an emotional energy that's held that doesn't really have anything to teach us anymore. It's just an accumulation. Sometimes we just need to process it on, on that level without an understanding in the mind. So as a healer and as a teacher and a coach, I can create a bridge with the healing experience as I create an understanding at the level of the mind so that the mind comes along, so that the healing is sustainable and more long-term because a lot of times people will go and have an experience of healing and then they go back into their life and then they get caught up in the story or they don't have the understanding of why that shifted or that, that healing so they don't come full circle. So to have a healing experience and to, to marry it with an understanding at the level of the mind, what I discovered is that more people experience that sustainable impact and it, they usually come full circle with the healing because they've had that level of understanding. So the ego doesn't have a point of weakness in the mind to pull them back into that old pattern or to pull them back into that that train of thought or those beliefs that actually created the root or the problem in the first place. Now, so that's why I love to do this show is because I love to create, uh, I love to challenge your mind. I love to challenge your mind, open your mind, unwind your mind, and give you an understanding so that you can actually move forward and create new pathways in the mind, new, new neural pathways that create a new experience and a new perception of what's going on around you. So we're working at the level of our humanness. We're kind of working with the mind, we're working with the emotions, we're working with the heart, the physical body, kind of bringing in the energy body and the spiritual body, and kind of bringing it all together and supporting and facilitating a healing that supports all of that. So it's more sustainable. And when we can sustain a new way of being, we create new experiences in our life. And as our internal environment becomes more stable and more of a sense of peace and calm within, then our external environment will reflect that. And when there's moments of challenge or when there's something we're witnessing that is impacting us, it will have less of an impact because we don't have our own leftovers. We can actually witness it for what it is and we can be present and play the role we're meant to play. And we don't get ca so caught up in our humanness because we don't have as much of our own history, our unhealed history, or our incomplete, incomplete traumas, like the, the traumas we had as, as a child aren't fully healed. When we, when we don't have all of that left over, we can actually meet the challenges in the world from a really clear place. 
So if something happens, like when I was telling that story earlier about the dog that almost got hit by the truck, and that reminded me of a childhood memory of a dog getting hit by the truck, which I blame myself for. If I didn't have that history, if I didn't have that leftover trauma and experience, I could have met that situation differently. I, my experience of it would have been different. So our internal environment is essential. If we want to change our experience of what's going on in the world, but also impact what's happening in the world. Because if we come into a situation and we can hold steady and we can be that voice that, that helps others hold steady, then we change the experience for others as well. So this challenge that I've been facing, I'm actually, the individuals that are kind of involved had said to me, I said, I need to take a step back. I need to like ground myself because I'm getting a little bit emotionally tied up in this. So I had to take a step back and find myself and find my footing and kind of land back into that state of inner peace and knowing and trusting. And then I could step back into it. And I, it was actually reflected back on me. And, my, and the one person said, like, I need you to be grounded because you're, you're what's grounding me. So I need you to do that. So my ability to stay grounded and centered in it empowers others to do the same. And there's times where I actually kind of pull back individuals that are getting emotion charged. And I'm like, I can calm them down. I can help them see a different perspective. I can help them get guidance around what role they're meant to play. Instead of being emotionally reactive, they can process their emotions and then respond. And when we respond from a place of what's guided, then it's serving everyone. But if we respond, if we react, then we're actually adding fear to the pot. We're stirring things up and adding more fear. When we can respond from that place of knowing that we have a role to play and that this is what we're meant to do, then we're actually serving everyone. And it's coming more from a place of serving from love versus reacting with fear. Your internal environment is where the place of inner peace is possible. And if you want peace to be on the outside all the time, then you're probably going to be living in a cave somewhere and far away from all of humanity and far away from any Wi-Fi or TV or anything else. Because right now we're entering very turbulent time. Everything that's needing to be healed is coming up to the surface for healing. All the darkness and density that's left over, all of our own leftovers, as well as humanity's collective leftovers, are all coming to the surface. Mother Earth is even discharging energy, dense energy that's not serving. So you're seeing volcanic activity, you're seeing tornadoes and hurricanes and a lot of different earthquakes and different fires and experiences of elements being released from the earth. It's all purposeful. There's a big cleansing, clearing, detoxing, purifying happening right now for all of us. And if you choose to look at through the lens of fear, then it would actually, you'd spiral down into fear. But I choose to look at it through a lens of love. And I've asked over and over again in times where I feel triggered, where I feel emotionally charged about it, I ask for another perspective. Show me how to see this through the divine, the divine's eyes, spirit's eyes through the lens of love. Show me the purpose. Show me a glimpse of it even. And that's what I get. I get these visions. I get these downloads in my meditation or in my journaling or whatever it is, whatever process I'm using at the time. 
sometimes just when I'm driving, I'll ask a question and I'll get, I'll get information, I'll get a download. And it's comforting because it's comforting my humanness. It's meeting me in my humanness and showing me a bigger purpose. It's providing an understanding which gives me a sense of meaning and purpose around what's happening. The role I play right now is one of impacting change. And I need to be willing to impact change in my own life in every moment in order to do that in the world. So when I ask for individuals to look at their internal environment, it's because I'm constantly looking at mine. When I talk about life by divine or heart-led living, for me, it's 24 seven. If I find myself awake at two in the morning, I'm meditating or I'm looking at my thoughts or I'm feeling into my emotions. I'm looking at my physical body. I'm tuning into anything. I'm using every moment of my day to be in alignment. Even in those moments where I'm having conversations that feel you know, we could judge them as insignificant, like talking about the weather or connecting with somebody at the grocery store. I still am setting an intention to hold a space and be operating from a place of love. For that conversation to be meaningful in a way or for that connection to be bigger than the words that are being shared or exchanged. So I went to, the, to get my driver's license here in Turks and Caicos. So in order to have a car and have it licensed down here, I need to have a driver's license. So the last time I went to get my car renewed for the, the sticker, they said I needed a driver's license. This was back in March. And so I had all the paperwork and everything I needed. And they said, oh, well, our machine to take pictures is broken. I'm like, okay, well, I'm leaving in two days or three days. And you know, can I wait and do my license another time? No, no, you have to do the paperwork, you have to pay, and then we, we should have it fixed. I'm like, okay. So then I went ahead and I paid and I got all the paperwork. And they said to come back the next day. So I came back and they said it was still broken. So I went back the next day, it was still broken. So again, in each interaction, I'm like, okay, I'm praying for whatever's meant to happen to happen. I can't be attached to an outcome. I can't be attached to having the, the license miraculously come together. But I can pray for the divine interactions and connections. So at that point, I ended up calling. I got this one woman's number and I called instead of having to go down because I only had one more day before I flew out. And I called and I said, okay, I'm trying to get my license. I need to get a photo. Is your photo thing working? No. And I said, okay. If I come down tomorrow before I fly, is it possible? And she's like, yes. Yeah. So I did do that. And again, it's like I went down there many times and there was bigger, there was something else in play. It was something else. So it was real deep trust for me. It was a good exercise in deep trust. So this is in March and I basically had all the paperwork and I'm like, okay, well, I'll come back. I'm gone for six months or more to six months. So when I come back, I'll, I'll bring the paperwork. And they're like, no, no, leave the paperwork here. And part of me is like, no way am I leaving the paperwork because it's going to get lost, right? So it's my, it's all my driver's license, it's my passport, my driver's license, everything is there. All the paperwork, my payment, my receipt, everything. And I stopped and paused and asked for guidance and I got leave the paperwork. So I'm like, okay, I'm entrusting my paperwork to you. When I come back to the island, I will come in and I'll see if I can get my license, my photo. So I trusted, I let go. I came back briefly in September, but I, I wasn't guided to go down because I didn't have enough time to go in and uh, deal with the license piece. So when I was here this time, I felt like I needed to, I felt like it was time to go in. So I went in and before I did, I said a prayer and I asked spirit, you know, align me with the individual I'm meant to connect with. Give me the words, give me the connection and the interaction allow myself to be in a deep place of trust 
and so that it would come together in the way that it's meant to. So I didn't have an agenda. I didn't have a plan. I didn't have a goal. I was just like, let it play out the way it's meant to. So a real deep surrender and blind faith and deep trust. So I went in and I lined up and I went to the, the woman and at the teller and she said, uh, I told her that I was there in March. She's like, and, I, and then the paperwork was still in. She, and she asked if I had my receipt. I'm like, no, I don't have anything. Everything is left here. It's somewhere there in your office. And I said, can you find it? And she's like, let me go look. So she went back and she, I could see her in the back and she was doing some, looking for some paperwork and stuff. And she came back and she had this huge smile on her face. I'm like, did you find it? She's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, you're good. So it like, it, it created this like cool spark in her and it actually like created such joy in me because I was just like, wow, like you have no idea. <laughs> I can't explain to you how things are filed here. It's, you know, it's a Caribbean country, you know, things just happen. You never know where things are going to end up. And it's been almost six months. So well, it's been pretty much six months. So I, I was like pleasantly surprised and, and so was she, it was really cool. It was a cool connection. And then the woman who ended up taking my picture, we had a really good connection. And I said, you know, I'm leaving on the 13th. Is there any way you can get my license before him? She's like, oh, she goes, but let me leave it on the 13th. I'm flying out on the 13th too. So we kind of had this really cool connection and interaction. And again, it was just like me just showing up as love me just showing up with an open heart and a curious mind without an agenda. And that was really cool. It was just a cool experience. So what would normally cause some anxiety or some worry or waiting in lines, like you, you line up in one line, it's the wrong line. You have to go to another line. A lot of that happens here. And there's a lot of hurry up and wait for things. So I just made a choice to experience it differently. And that, that's what happened. So I was in this place of peace. I was celebrating the miracle that they found my paperwork. And we'll see if I get my license before I go. I have no idea, but I'm open. And I got the woman's number so I can actually connect with her and call her and find out. So it felt very purposeful. Even though I can't even explain the meaning and the purpose behind it, it felt purposeful on a deep level. So I didn't have the anxiety. I didn't have the worry. I didn't have the frustration that some other people in line did because I changed my mindset going in. I decided that I wasn't attached. I would just show up and however it was meant to play out would play out. So life by design is you trying to make things happen. Life by divine is allowing things to unfold the way they're meant to and being willing to play the role you're meant to without attachment to the outcome. And that's where the real freedom comes in. That's where the real peace comes in. It's quite liberating. And there's these cool experiences and sparks that happen when we show up as love, with an intention of love, animated by love. And that's really what Life by Divine is about, is letting our humanness be animated by love. Meeting those challenges, meeting that chaos, meeting anything in life with love, deep trust, blind faith. Knowing that it's, if it's on your path, it's purposeful. And then trusting that it may or may not be revealed. The purpose may or may not be revealed. Trust anyways. So today, as you move through your day and as you move through your week, I want to invite you to look at what is stopping you, what is blocking you, what is bumping up against and preventing you from being at peace. What is influencing your internal environment? And where can you enter through the body, through the emotions, through the mind, through the stories, through the beliefs, through the thoughts? Where is a good point of entry for you to go in and explore that internal environment so you can soften and allow that energy to move and shift and be expressed 
to allow your mind to be unwound for another perspective to drop in, to shift the way you're seeing the situation so that you can return to a place of peace. Because that's your true nature. That's your true nature. We've been programmed to be in fear. We've been programmed to be in chaos and to create pain and suffering. And it's in letting go of that programming and unwinding from that that we can return to that place of peace. I have coming up on Sunday a live Intuition Academy experience for free. If you want to come and join me and have a free experience, it's Sunday on the 8th of December. And you can sign up at heartledliving.com forward slash live, L-I-V-E. And I would love to see you there and come join me. I'm going to be doing some, a meditative lesson, some intuitive readings and tuning in with people and supporting you live in that experience if you feel inspired to join me. And I look forward to sharing more information and more insights and more of my tools and tricks and perspectives as we move through into the rest of this year and into the new year. And I love you. I appreciate you. I honor you. I see you. I thank you. Until next week. Namaste. You've been listening to Life by Divine with your host, Sue DeMay. Shift your consciousness from head to heart and enliven your soul as you discover how to lead with your heart and live your own life by divine. Join Sue in the growing global heart-led living community at heartledliving.com. That is heartledliving.com.